Welcome to SVG TV's news for Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. Active COVID-19 cases here in SVG are now back in double digits at 18 with one hospitalization. In the latest update provided on Tuesday by the Ministry of Health, it said 14 a new PCR and COVID-19 new and nine new rapid antigen tests have been recorded. There has been 6,641 recoveries with, 1, with 106 and six deaths to date. 70,600 vaccines have also been administered to date, which include 31,160 first dose and 30,299 second doses. Acting Prime Minister and Minister of Transport and Works Montgomery Daniel has provided an update on the condition of Prime Minister Dr. Alf Gonsalves. Gonsalves, who is currently undergoing medical treatment overseas. Prime Minister Gonsalves left the state last Sunday for Venezuela uh, on advice from health officials here. Speaking on NBC Radio today, a uh, Prime Minister Daniel sorry, said Prime Minister Dr. Afghan Salves has communicated that he is in good spirits, adding the ruling party is looking forward to his return to office. Indeed, of course, you, you realize that, of course, you have to slow down, you know, stop doing the things you used to be doing before. And because you, you have you're at that limit to which you, you're here on this earth. But Prime Minister Gonsalves have gone past three score and ten, and he's still doing well. And um, of course, we we want to wish him all the all all the best. We want to wish him a speedy recovery. As I understand it, that he's doing well, and that of course, we want to uh, wish him well and and to make sure that he's back here with us in the very near future. And we will continue to, to hold the fort in his absence. We have done that several times. And, and of course, um, we continue to do the work of the state. And, uh, and we, we're here to do what the people would have uh, elected us to do. British royals Prince Edward and Countess Sophie will have a packed schedule of events when they visit St. Vincent and the Grenadines this weekend. SVG will be hosting the royal couple for a one-day visit on Saturday, April 23rd. The visit is part of the Caribbean tour for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebration. Acting Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel spoke about the details of the upcoming visit on NBC Radio Today. Prince Edward, who is one of the members of the royal family, he will be visiting St. Vincent on Saturday, it's a one-day visit, and he's due to arrive here in St. Vincent at around 9.30 a.m. at the Argyle International Airport, and um, he'll have a jam-packed day where he would he would uh, go to the Diamond Tract, of course, to see what uh, there are some games going on that uh, who, that would be on at that time. Then he'll go to the Annasville Sporting Complex as well, where, again, some games are going on there. And um, then there will be a luncheon, of course, for him. And and then there, you know, the tree planting session in the gardens. So that um, there's a jump pack session for him, you know, for, for that for that day and then he leaves later on in the evening. Minister Daniel said he considers, his, considers it a privilege to welcome Prince Edward and his wife to the island. The school child coming into Kingstown to wave the British flag. Yes. And here it is after almost what, 59 years. <laughs> I'm here now to, as the person who is in charge at this point in time, to be welcoming Prince Edward and his wife here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
history yes. is indeed in the making. And so, you know, I would welcome the Prince here for his one-day visit, along with my other cabinet colleagues. The Royal Caribbean tour ends on April 28 and includes uh, stops in Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada and St. Lucia. Now for our Rise from the Ashes stories this evening. A number of residents from the North Windward area are expressing frustration with the speed at which work is being done to resettle them one year after the explosive eruption of Lassifera volcano. Our news team visited a private shelter recently to speak with persons whose homes were damaged in the 2021 eruption. At least 13 families are said to be housed at private shelters, which is funded by the Ministry of National Mobilization. While residents declined to be interviewed on camera, they did share the challenges that they are facing as they await word on when their homes will be made re repaired. They told SVGTV News that living in shelters is an uncomfortable situation as they are forced to depend on families to provide daily meals. Residents also complained about not receiving updates from the government officials about the process of the repairs, progress of the repairs. Meanwhile, on radio today, Minister of Transport and Works and Parliamentary Representative for North Winwood Montgomery Daniel said he is also concerned about the slow pace of the repair and rebuilding work being done in his constituency. He said he has been regularly receiving queries from residents about the progress of the work, which has been stalled recently. Daniel revealed funds have been released for, home re for house repairs and Braxa is moving to complete work within four weeks. I'm concerned very much of the, the pace at which this work has been going on because, of course, we, as a representative, of course, we, you know, we do have um, a number of families still in shelter. Um, my last, my last, um, the, the information that came last to me was that there are still some 44 persons in shelter. And this, these are persons who, because of their, their level three and four houses, the house damage, yes. that they cannot go back to their, to their homes. And we have just gotten the release of funds on, on, on these and the work has has begun and I want to give the assurance that within another month some of these these families should be able to return or start returning to, the, to their homes. Minister Daniel also said there has been delays with completing the 27 houses at Orange Hill for residents whose homes could not be repaired. He said the new timeline for project completion is three weeks. Minister Daniel said the government is still awaiting word from the Mystique Charitable Trust about the construction of 41 houses on the windward side. The Ministry of Housing, they are finalizing on the interior works on these houses. And Again, of course, these these houses are taking, you know, beyond beyond the, the you know the time that one would have anticipated. But the work is slowly coming by, and I am told that all of that work should be completed 
within another two to three weeks' time. And fishing area residents of North Leeward are said to be struggling to get back on their feet following the explosive eruptions of Lassifre volcano, which wreaked, which wreaked havoc on agriculture, destroyed homes, and changed the landscape of some of the communities in the red zone, including the North Leeward area. Our team recently spoke with Chateaubelair resident Cardon DJ Flip Simmons, who is being deemed as an unsung hero as his bravery during the series of volcanic eruptions last year. Uh, he, we hear more in this report on how he handled the ordeal in Simmons, an entertainer by profession within the cruise industry, was seen in many live videos on social media during the explosive eruptions of the Lassifre volcano last year, risking it all to get his fellow villagers out to safety. Simmons says despite what he went through to get his residents out of harm's way, the experience was one that he does not regret and would do it all over again to save his people. For it was like an apocalypse. Just looking at people, everyone got the evacuation notice and um, so at that point on Thursday, everyone knew that they should have already gone or hop on a bus, hop on whatever transportation. But on Friday, the morning of the eruption, when we were there in Fitzhugh's village, right there, and just to see those who are running with their luggage, their suitcase, who was running with whatever they can get their hands on, just running towards us myself and um, DJ Rich to look at the people like we were the only means to them so for them to get out and just like we don't at that point we had no choice but to complete a mission that we set out um, to do but the fear in their eyes is what kept me going and I'm like no no one is safe until everyone is safe so at that point I already calculated that God won't take me somewhere where he can't protect me. Simmons explained how devastated he felt standing in the middle of his hometown as an eerie silence settled in the surrounding communities, usually buzzing with omnibuses making their rounds or villagers communicating with each other. The way in which we left Chateaubelair on Thursday evening and then when I revisited on Sunday, when the ash like settled on the roofs and that's when a lot of the roofs started like you know um falling apart and i was literally standing in the middle of the town and hearing all these noise um a lot of noises about of, of roofs just dropping in like you know it's like a total destruction it was very devastating so leaving your hometown uh, where it was whole right compared to when it's all falling apart and you are there in the center of the town just looking at the destruction first time i just couldn't like understand what was happening i thought i was still dreaming simmons highlighted a number of factors which led to persons making the choice to remain in the red zone although being cautioned by authorities not to do so for their own safety disseminating the information, getting the information out there and breaking the information down to those who are less fortunate to understand, uh, I mean, you know, when certain words are being used and how yeah. the information is being put out there, right? So that was the first um, problem that I encountered, that's that the way in which the information were being put out there, it there was a problem in, in getting the information um, simplified even though the authorities would have mentioned that they have already organized um what do you call these shelters and all of that because not everyone has the luxury to go to a family member and you know so it's so so that was a, an issue by itself because remember that the shelters wouldn't have been prepared until like that moment when um the prime minister and what when the state were to leave right not I mean, transportation as well would have been an issue on that present moment. Not forgetting, some were just stubborn as well. The humanitarian said currently, there are a number of persons in the North Leeward community who are struggling financially since last year's eruption as their main source of income has been greatly affected. Most of the homes, right, they are like um, 
heavily dependent on farming and fishing and these industries has been like um affected big time farming that's a story by itself as well like you know the ash on the land at the moment so the land will eventually become fertile but at the moment um it's 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 pretty hard for the world so you pretty much see a lot of homes like just um just just living and things are not as good as before those who had produce of 100 to 100 pounds now um, down to a smaller scale to like um, 20 pounds 30 pounds and i think i mean <laughs> yeah it's survival of the fittest at the moment do it but based on observation you can literally see right like, like you can really see that the struggle is real at the moment it is real you know and we're just hoping for better days but um, one thing I know about the people of Nortley, what is that they are very resilient and they are strong people. And they, I don't know how they do it, but they do. Extending thank you to the persons who provided assistance to the residents affected by the eruption, Simmons noted that he rarely thinks about human recognition as he believes this is a person he was created to be. And as long as he's able to lend a helping hand, he will always give it his best. Reporting for SVG TV News, I am Nicole Ballantyne. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines National Trust is working to mitigate the impact of, April, of the April 2021 eruption of Lassifer Volcano on the nation's petroglyphs and other historical sites. Recently, the Trust led a number of community groups to clean 13 stones petroglyph located on a ridge between Pichibodel and Chateaubelair. Although the site is called 13 stones, it comprises of over 16 rocks, into which hundreds of cup holes are carved. Manager of the SVG National Trust, Laverne Bentic Phillips, said various community groups have come together as part of the workshop carried out by the Caribbean branch of the International Council on Archives. Caribbean Heritage Emergency Network and UNESCO were were we're actually doing the practical cleaning of these petroglyphs. Various community groups have come together as part of the workshop carried out by Kabika Chen in and UNESCO, where we are actually doing the practical cleaning of these petroglyphs. When we got to the site, we found the holes within the rocks still filled with volcanic ash. So we are here to clean these petroglyphs. Even though the petroglyphs would have survived how many volcanic activities over time, there are still some areas that they would need our assistance. We are very cautious not to disrupt the history that it carried, such as removing sediment. And we are very careful in not removing any modern day sediment that would be history for the future generations to come. Meanwhile, as Vincent Reed, who has been commissioned by the SVG National Trust to map all historian sites in SVG, urged Vincentians to familiarize themselves with the locations of the nation's petroglyphs. I want people to be aware of the petroglyphs, to be aware of our historical and cultural heritage sites, and to understand that they speak to us. They tell us that there was someone before us. They were our forefathers. They were there before us, and it's important that we respect and try to preserve what they left as a record of their existence. How much times you don't want to keep your loved ones who die close to you? You go every 1st and 2nd of November and you put candles on the graves. That's you showing respect for them, for their memory. These people came before us so long before us and left record of their passing. And we need to respect that. Vincentians need to get on board and start to look at these cultural heritage sites, these petroglyphs and all those other buildings that speaks of our first existence, of our history, and to respect them and to have pride in knowing where they are, what they mean, and do everything that they can to try and preserve it. 
The cleaning of the petroglyphs form part of the series of workshops organized by the Department of Culture, the National Commission for UNESCO, and well, as well as the Cluster Office at the Caribbean in collaboration with Caribana Chen. And the webinar series focused on building capacity and resilience for cultural heritage in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's how we end our Rise from the Ashes series for today. Oya nurse Lucretia Nanton appeared at the serious offenses court today, charged with being in possession of nearly 60 kilograms of cocaine, which is a controlled drug and possession for the purpose of drug trafficking. Nanton, represented by lawyer Ronald Marx, pleaded not guilty to both charges. She was granted bail in the sum of 200,000 EC dollars, with two sureties and ordered to surrender all travel documents and stop notices placed at all ports of entry. Permission to leave the state must be, short, must be sought, and she is to report to the OEO police station every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The matter was adjourned to June 20, 2022. Police have arrested and charged Cordial Jack, a 42-year-old carpenter of Murray's Village, with the offense of arson. The accused man allegedly without lawful excuse destroyed one 18 feet by 25 feet two-story wall and wooden dwelling house and its contents by setting it on fire. The value of the dwelling house and its contents are unknown. The incident occurred on March 15th at about 10.37 a.m. at Murray's Village. Jack is expected to appear before the Kingston Magistrate Court to answer to the charges. Meanwhile, police have also arrested and charged Jeffrey Cuffey, a 32-year-old laborer of Gatels and Sign Hill, with the offense of assault, bodily harm, and theft. The accused man allegedly assaulted a 48-year-old domestic of Camden Park by pushing her to the ground, causing actual bodily harm. He was also charged with the theft of one blue Samsung A20 cellular phone and the chip valued at 615 EC dollars. The property of the virtual complainant. The incident occurred at Kingston along the Richmond Hill Public Road on October 18, 2021. At about 5 p.m., Cuffey is expected to appear before the Kingston Magistrate Court to answer to the charges. With schools across SVG now back in session after the short Easter break, omnibus drivers and conductors are asked to be mindful of their music selection while transporting school children. The word of caution comes from a traffic cop, ASP Parnell Brown. Again, I am a school is has been reopened today. I am advising drivers, please. Be courteous on our roads. Playing of music and the kind of music that they're playing would not help our nation youths to develop into proper man and woman. I am appealing to drivers, to motorists who are in the process of taking our children to and from school, be courteous and be considerate. If you have to play anything, play the news. Let them tune into the news so that could, they could get some current affairs, some, something that they miss during class that they can pick up on to enhance their learning ability. The music would not help you. The music will aid you getting yourself into 
into trouble. ASP Brown said the RSVG police force has also recently taken action against several omnibus operators seen in videos circulating on social media driving recklessly on the roads. I've seen um, clippings from persons who have recorded motor omnibus mm -hmm. uh, with, with their reckless behavior on the road and um, currently we are carrying out some investigation into some of these videos that are published on the on the um the on social media and as soon as we have enough evidence of the person or persons who are carrying out these acts we will be taking action against them.